In this lecture, we will learn about RNA velocity in situ analysis for inferring gene expression dynamics using molecular resolution spatially resolved transcriptomic imaging data. Current high-throughput single-cell transcriptomic profiling technologies like single-cell RNA sequencing and spatially resolved transcriptomics like MRFISH and others measure the gene expression levels in individual single cells, but in a destructive manner, meaning that the cells are destroyed in the measurement process. The single-cell resolution gene expression measurements that we obtain, therefore, represent a static snapshot in time, and we're unable to follow these cells as they differentiate and undergo other dynamic processes and see how their genes change over time. However, we may still be able to infer some degree of gene expression dynamics from this static snapshot. Let's consider for a moment a different kind of static snapshot. Here we have a photo of a group of friends jumping off a cliff. Even though this is a static picture and we don't have a video, given some positional information like each friend's distance away from the water or distance away from a cliff, as well as a few assumptions like gravity goes down, we can not only create a lower dimensional representation, in this case a 1D pseudotemporal ordering, but also assign a directionality to the pseudotemporal ordering in time. Furthermore, you can infer that this friend, at a time point in the near future, delta t, will likely have a distance away from the water and distance away from the cliff that's pretty similar to the positional information of this other friend here. That is, you can infer something about the future positional information of each friend based on the current observed positional information of the other friends. This is the general intuition behind RNA velocity, which is defined as the time derivative of a cell's gene expression state. Instead of having each friend represented by their positional information, we have cells represented by their gene expression measurements. And again, we can use this gene expression information to create a lower dimensional pseudotemporal ordering of our cells. And we'll aim to use RNA velocity analysis to predict the future gene expression state of individual cells on the time scale of hours that will also help us assign a directionality to the pseudotemporal ordering in time. In the original RNA velocity model from 2018, developed during my PhD in Peter Karchenko's lab at Harvard, we sought to predict the future gene expression state of individual cells by modeling RNA velocity based on the ratio of unspliced to spliced mRNAs that can be readily inferred from full transcript single cell RNA sequencing data. There are many other videos already explaining the RNA velocity modeling, so I won't dwell on it here. Instead, I'll focus on explaining how, even though such distinctions between unspliced and spliced mRNAs typically isn't available in imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomic technologies, we can still infer RNA velocity by adapting the model for an in-situ analog. In particular, following the central dogma, we can model genes as being initially transcribed in the nucleus and then exported into the cytoplasm of the cell where they can be translated into proteins and eventually degraded. As we demonstrated in our 2019 PNAS paper from my postdoc in Xiaowei Zhuang's lab at Harvard, we predict the future gene expression state of cells by modeling RNA velocity based on the ratio of nuclear to cytoplasmic mRNAs, which can be readily inferred from spatially resolved transcriptomic imaging data, in particular MRFISH. Specifically, if we segment a cell, rather than counting each transcript in that whole cell, we distinguish between the transcripts that are in the nuclei versus the cytoplasm. If we make a number of simplifying assumptions, we can model the rate of change of the cytoplasmic mRNA, DCDT, as a function of what comes in from the nucleus minus what goes out due to degradation. Therefore, by quantifying the nuclear and cytoplasmic mRNAs in molecular resolution spatially resolved transcriptomic imaging data across a population of cells, we can note some cells as being at steady state with a consistent ratio of what gets made versus what gets degraded, while other cells are actively upregulating this gene, which should have comparatively higher nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios, where other cells are downregulating this gene will have a comparatively lower nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. As a more concrete example, let's consider this real imaging-based spatial transcriptomic MRFISH dataset of cultured U2OS cells from our 2019 PNAS paper. Here each point is a cell, and for this one gene, MCM6, Again, we quantify the nuclear and cytoplasmic expression level in each cell. 
Here we can see that some cells are actively upregulating this gene with a comparatively higher nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, while other cells are downregulating this gene with a comparatively lower nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. And we can also do this for all the other genes that fit this model in our data based on some minimal level of correlation between nuclear to cytoplasmic expression levels. In this manner, we can not only observe the current gene expression in each cell, represented here where each column is a gene and red is high expression and blue is low expression, but we can also estimate the future gene expression for this cell at a future delta t, where now some genes will be higher and other genes will be lower. And we can project both this observed and predicted future high dimensional gene expression vector into a 2D lower dimensional embedding using dimensionality reduction approaches like t-stochastic neighbor embedding to appreciate how, in this case, we get a very nice circle. Keep in mind that these are cultured cells, so the main gene expression dynamics we're observing here is with respect to the cell cycle. And indeed, if we identify genes that have a significant pseudotemporal dependence and order them with respect to the directional pseudotemporal ordering we derive from this analysis, we can appreciate all the transcriptional changes that cells have to gradually undergo to progress through the cell cycle states. With that, I hope that this lecture helps students understand a little bit more about what is RNA velocity in C2 analysis. More recommended readings are linked from the description below. And more broadly, I hope that students will appreciate how, by understanding the theory behind computational modeling approaches like RNA velocity analysis for single cell RNA sequencing data, we can adapt them for new types of data modalities, such as imaging-based spatially resolved transcriptomics, as they are made possible in the future. Explain briefly what is RNA velocity in situ. No, it's not. Gah, thanks, AI.